Folks, please welcome the creator of the show, Karen Margulies. Where's Karen? Where did Karen go? She was here before. Thank you, just a moment. She, she, we thought she was in here watching with us, um, and she wasn't before, and knew there was a Q&A. Um, <laughs> how'd you like the show? Do we? Um, the show is on the Hot channel in Israel. Literally, it's called Hot. Um, which is one of the cable channels. And wow, this has never happened before. That's a new one. Um, was it something we said? You didn't laugh enough from the jokes. You really... Um, some of the things I was looking forward to talking to her about, which I'm sure she'll come in any moment now, um, or of course, uh, the inspirations. One of the things that struck me the most in the show, first of all, is um, Noah Kohler, the lead actress. Fantastic, right? She's unbelievable. She's also the lead actress in our closing night film. Um, uh, so, um, if you like her, there, there's there are a few more tickets to that, and you could see more of her there. She was also in the wedding plan. Did anybody see that one? We screened that one here. Um, she's been in a lot, but she's she's uh, she is fantastic. Um, so it's going to talk a little bit about the acting, a little bit about um, uh, the um, uh, mood of the show as far as the um, just the reality that she's capturing. Um, in uh, th There's, of course, the suspense that uh, keys us together from episode to episode, but there's also that, um, that level of reality that, uh, that is, I'd say, most of the show, their conversations, their interactions, um, just making it so normal with this tension that uh, will slowly um, develop and, um, and um, uh, evolve throughout the season. Um, I'm I'm sorry I I can't add more without Karen. It's a little a little a little strange. Um, we will make sure to get an update. Yes, there's a question, a comment. Uh, how could you watch more episodes legally um, and with subtitles in English? That's one one element of it. Um, but right now, I'll tell you something interesting that's going on with the Israeli film industry. I, I, I spoke to one of the networks about getting more of the... Oh, is that Karen coming down? Hello, Karen. Wow, I've been, I've been, I've been dancing here. Um, it, was, it was really a sad performance. Um, how could people mo watch more episodes of this? I'm sorry, I never can see the screenings. I can hear all the time people moving and and I started to read about David Bowie on the on my cell phone and I was so swept away that I forgot to come back because we saw the exhibition today and then she said come come and I was I arrived only to his 60s and I was saying what already so D David Bowie has a strong impact on all of us yeah so sorry I apologize um, well, you missed the applause and uh, the nice things I was, uh, more, more. Nice things I was sharing about Noah Kohler. Tell us about the inspiration for this. Where did this come from? Noah will be in a film tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday night, closing night. Yeah, she's, she's a, fantastic. A very strong actress today in Israel. So she's in a lot of places. So somebody was joking yesterday to us on the panel that acting in Israeli TV shows is not on the same level as... And I was just like, what? This? You know, you don't get better than that. Um, but tell us about the... What, what inspired this? What was, uh, what was the idea behind it? Where did it come from? Um, you know, you, you see, we see too much movies, so the, we think that there's this one moment that you have a orica, but it's not like this. I think it's many things... Uh, it was a process. Basically, this film is a this series is about a woman who loses trust in people, and she needs to gain her trust back. And I think that happened 
for personal levels, not something I can put my finger on. And then there was this time that in Israel there was the stabbing. Um, and I remember, you know, there's this common knowledge between people, a basic trust, unspoken, that you walk in the street and no one runs over you. And this very basic truth was not right anymore. So, uh, so something about a personal uh, trust and confidence was lost. I think this was the second thing. And then I looked for, I said, what character has a lot of faith in people? And it's interesting to see how, what happens to a person like that who loses his faith. And I thought that the teachers, it's people who have uh, believe in education, believe in the opportunity of people to change. There are people who have trust in the world. So I started to go to these schools and I was a teacher there. It, it's kind of a special school. Um, the kids come from hard background, small uh, classes, very, very amazing teachers. And uh, so I spent some time there, ruined a lot of uh, kids' math because they told me, help them, help them. And I said, help me help them. <laughs> and then I opened uh, uh, the next year a film class and a lot of the kids acting here are, were my students. So it was like a really nice project that our aim was to put a good experience, like they, they can write from their self a good experience in life and take it on. So it was a very special. Uh... Stylistically, um, I, was, I was mentioning before, there's this reality that I feel is kind of, um, it's kind of a big part of the show. Um, seeing the kind of normality, day-to-day -day life, and maybe that helps also build the tension there or fill in those gaps. But it's also just a big element of it is, is seeing the, the, the life of a mother um, in these modern times um, kind of dealing with her day-to-day. -day. Um, is that uh, an element that you were going for? What, uh, what, what, why is it important for you to show so much of that? Um, I think also this, and I can say it in a looking back, but is about people in the size of life. Also here in Yellow Peppers, the series I did before, the, these were people that are the size of us people, and they were not movie stars, not bigger than life. They're the size of life, and something big happens to them, and that's very important. And this character has all, you know, you can see she has two families. She has her husband and their kids, and she has the principal and their kids in school, and she has these two lives she's running between, and the the threat can come from everywhere. It's important to see everything in order to understand how your mind, like, starts to run around. Fascinating. And I think it's, it's refreshing to see that in a little bit, to see, to see uh, the, these normal people um, and, and yet still be able to enjoy kind of the drama and the tension within their, their normality. Um, the Israeli TV industry is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, something that's um, really um, uh, conquering the world at the moment and doing very well as an export and, um, and um, uh, Fauda is like a big example, which I'd say possibly a, a hard comparison between these two. But Fauda has been a game changer in many ways, although not the first game changer along the way for the Israeli industry. And I, some, when somebody asked about how they could watch more episodes, I was going to share that now Israel is holding on to their TV very tightly. They feel that they're that these are all potential. They're, they're, they have the potential to be the next Fauda and going to sell to Netflix. Um, is this, uh, how do people see more of this? And um, where do you put this in the world of like, did, did you think as you were creating this, oh, I, this is something that we could sell to other countries? Is that something that's part of that process? First of all, I think the first show that made the breakthrough was in treatment, if anyone saw. In treatment, home, then it went to homeland. Yes, but and then treatment it, was first and it was very special because Israel took its niche of small budget productions, two uh, actors, good dialogue. Um, and I remember I wrote, uh, besides my, the others were good. Uh, one, I wrote one line in the second season and it was very, uh, and it, the, it was really all over the world. This Haggai Levy was the creator of it. So I think that was the first thing. And Fauda is the first thing going as is, which is a really great achievement. And now we're working on a pilot for this. Uh, serious uh, to the US. Um, and 
the show I did before Yellow Peppers went to the BBC to a remake, because I think dramas are, are harder to be as is, because it's a very cultural thing, and, um, and I think it works better in adaptations. So, so where can you see? I can send you links. <laughs> That's, uh, I, I told them there are illegal options, but I didn't uh, yeah. specify. No, uh, you can see it on Mako, but it's with no English subtitles. English subtitles, I have, I can uh, share them. We're, we're, we're going to have to find a way to show here the rest of the episodes, but I can tell you it's, it's hard to now to get the rights for Israeli TV shows to put on, for instance, a streaming, our streaming site because um, uh, they're waiting for Netflix. Um, and if it's being remade, they're going to hold on to it uh, yeah. pretty tightly. Um, who's producing the remake? Where is it being? Uh, um, it's, we, uh, I'm adaptation. writing now the pilot, but we're, it's going to, it's complicated. Yeah, because usually what they do is that they remake it. They take the Israeli creator outside, and uh, some eventually I think it didn't turn out so well because to take um, the creator of a project out of the project is like taking the heart out of the project, and I think in the end it becomes something technical. So there's a lot of um, things. At times they try to do it like this with other series, and it failed. So. I think they're looking for an option to... Where are you having them live in the, in the American version? We're thinking about it a lot. I think something more San Francisco and... Yeah. Um, I would love to take some questions, comments, reactions from the audience. I see up there a hand. Hi. Uh, this is a technical question. There's a lot of the scenes in the movie occur in a car, either a person individually or interacting with others. And I was always wondering about this. How is, are you actually filming people actually driving or is there some other method of doing that? It depends. When, when you see the, the people from in front, of course they're not driving because the camera is, so you put the car on a, a wagon, you say, or something that, Oh. Yeah, and they don't drive, and then you see for hours they forget to move the... <laughs> <laughs> but if it's from here shot or from the back, mostly it's the camera and the, the driver driving, and it's, I think it's much nicer like this. Why are there so many scenes in the car? Um, you know, they're... <laughs> Uh, it's just written like that, and I, <laughs> I don't know why, but I think in the end a lot of people in movies like car scenes because driving a car is cinema, is like the m moving images and sound, and we all love it, like we love cinema, I think. And, and this character doesn't have a place of her own, basically. In her house, the children take her space, and she, like, she needs a room of her own, and that's the room of her own, like the car, so... Uh, how did you uh, come up with the title for the series? First in Hebrew, Lahir et um, and then Sleeping Bears in English. To, to translate, it's Waking Up the Bear. It would be the literal translation. Uh, it was called for many uh, months, Diaries. I knew it's a very bad name. I'm, I'm really bad in uh, inventing names. I think it's, you know, this legend that you don't know how to call your baby, and when it comes you see it and you know his name, this thing that never happened to me. But I was hoping it will happen. In the end, it, it's a phrase of the, of the film, of the series in episode three, and it really, really fits the series. It was built in. You'll have to wait for episode three. But, uh, where would she be living in Israel? Where is the house? The, the, She's living in Haifa. The, the school is in Haifa. The, the house is like, it's Kerem Aral, but basically we, we shot it somewhere in Klil. Uh, so Kerem Aral would be somewhere on the way between uh, Haifa and Tel Aviv. Very uh, vague, I say. And, um, yeah, right, yeah. We have some questions on the side. 
Just wait for the mic. I wonder what the business reason is that um, Israeli companies are reluctant to license their programs abroad. Uh, I mean, in here in the United States, um, I think uh, networks were originally very happy to get that extra revenue uh, when Netflix, for instance, began to produce its own programs, Amazon and so forth, and become more of a rival, uh, uh, some of the traditional uh, producer distributors became more reluctant to license uh, their programs to, to these newcomers. I'm not quite sure. They're, they're, very, they're, they're not reluctant. They want to... Uh, they're, they're hoping for Netflix to buy it. They're hoping for Hulu to buy the rights for the show when the American one comes out, and they're waiting for the right deals um, to happen, so that's why they're, they're holding out. And, and sometimes actually limited, actually saying, wait a minute, we're working on the American version. Let's hold the rights to the Israeli version, too, so we can play that in the right way. Is that, is that your take? There's uh, two last questions we could take up there. So I saw a hand up on top. Hi. First of all, thank you. That was wonderful. What's the significance of where the house was located that it was so isolated? W what does it mean? Um, why, why, ha why not have her live in the city? No, of course. L listen, a lot of the things I think in uh, art is why is the answer is because. <laughs> and, and if we knew... And I try to keep this level of answers that, why? Because I don't know. But um, I think it's, it's some kind of isolation. She was at her house. She had to, in order to fix her house with her husband, um, she had to move very far, whereas there is no uh, stimulation. stimulation in order to make this work again. In, in everywhere in the city, there's a lot of stimulation. The principal, and, and she, if she wanted to recover this marriage, she needed to go to a place that it has a chance, that they are really alone. Obviously, her plans went different, but that was the, the idea, I think, of the character. We have another question. Hi, there. thank you. Um, I'm wondering how the Israeli public is reacting to the series, and if you could explain a little bit about what they like or don't like about the series. Uh, it, here, this, this uh, series was not in a natural home. It was aired on a, a commercial, Channel 2, or Today 12, on a commercial uh, network. Basically, her, her natural home would be the cables and would be satellites. But it didn't. Also, the, the show I did before was on Autistic Kid, also went there, and I think the, the, the mixture made something interesting. It's not a, a typical place, but it, it's there. And here it was, today it's much harder because all the rating, uh, the, the network, the broadcaster has divided, so there's less rating per, um, per channel and also not many viewers in the begin for the beginning. So they really put it at 11 o'clock at night. It was a very hard, it was hard, and, and in a commercial you see all these pop-ups during the frame. It was a hard uh, screening, but it still it got 10%. Uh, in 11 o'clock at night it was really, really extraordinary, and a lot of people saw it in other platforms. So, but I, it was not for the, I think, not for the very wide public. Um, the moment we lost children, as potential audience, it's really, uh, and uh, with the uh, episodes going further, it's about uh, marriage life after 40s, it goes deep and painful into that, and uh, there was no children uh, as a potential audience, and uh, that's where it, uh, like, it took a lot of audience uh, off. But you know the critics. It's slow. We need. We want fast. We want. Uh, we want uh, stimulated. And this is like meditation. It was very important for me to be like a meditation. Um, 
Just uh, to close things up, one other beautiful thing, and you were mentioning uh, being uh, enthralled with David Bowie before. The music is a big part of this show. Um, uh, what uh, what were it, it, it starts off with a big song. You're throughout using a lot of music. People are singing constantly. Where's that coming from? Um, you know, it's I, my worst uh, nightmare is when we die and we figure out there's no music. Where whatever happens there. So I say what, whenever we can use it here, let's use it because I think it's from there. Karen, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you, folks. We look forward to seeing you at other screenings. Hope you have tickets for the rest of the week and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Have a good night. Bye.